Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, well, it's show number 180 for the Irish Family History Podcast, and this is actually our sixth year. I think I'll have that promo fixed so next time it reads that correctly. Uh, But among the topics today at the Irish Roots Cafe, the family of the day is Harris. The book of the month is Fall of Irish Chiefs and Clans. Searching for Sullivan of Cork, Gee, McNally, and Cody. Uh, Curious news, New Zealand is 15% Irish. Uh, Web page of the month, County Clare. And number six, Curious Notes, Island in Michigan with Irish Roots. And number seven, the one-minute podcast. We're going to go back to a little bit of uh, Irish history in the 17th century, the wild geese and all those uh, fun sort of things. And remember, we've got an enhanced podcast and a regular podcast, and uh, they're all for you, so take advantage of it. And especially if you have iTunes, try the enhanced version. It has photo enhancements and links you can click on. Oh, what's happening this week? Let me see. Well, working on our first audio book CD. That's a hard copy CD for the audio book. And we've got an audio download of Missouri Irish on the webpage already. And we thought we'd experiment with that and make our... Uh, our first uh, digital production in a hard CD copy. That would just be real interesting, I think. And, uh, hey, that reminds me, we produced our very first DVD a year or so ago. That was returned to Irish Roots. It had a little bit of everything we do. And that took some time to figure out with video and sound and visuals. And I think I remember about half of what I learned back then. So if I do another DVD, it's going to take me a couple months to remember what I forgot. And number three, you know our next project might be a CD or a DVD series on the counties of Ireland with family history in mind. Uh, What do you think about that? I've got a lot of information on every county, and uh, I could just add that to our county books. That would be an interesting project. Uh, It's just the production money I'm after, or at least the production time I'm after, that's for sure. Uh, But that'll be an interesting little project. Let me know if you've got any thoughts on... uh, what you'd like to see in the way of uh, CDs or DVDs. And that reminds me, I'm telling everybody, I've produced all this on a Macintosh, and boy, it saved the day because there's a DVD program that comes with the Mac, and there's also a iMovie that comes with the Mac. So uh, consider that if you're buying or upgrading a computer. It sure made a difference for me. It comes with all these, these things. You don't have to buy uh, a lot of upgrades right away, so... Just some food for thought. Now it's time for that one-minute podcast. Uh, Today's one-minute podcast is going to include a little bit about the flight of the Earls in the 17th centuries. Here it is right now. But several things had happened, and one thing that happened that the Spanish Armada uh, shipwrecked off the northwest coast of Ireland, and O'Neill took those shipwrecked victims in, and he was ordered to uh, to murder them, to put it frankly, and he didn't do it. And so that brought up a lot of suspicion, saying, well, what's the deal here? Uh, so a lot of the uh, English side of the fence started to think he was a little suspicious and they couldn't trust him, and uh, I think that would prove out later. So that started, and they had what they called O'Neill's War or Tyrone's uh, Rebellion. Uh, some call it the Nine Years' War. Some say six, some say eight, but uh, the the authorities say nine years. And uh, 
That was quite a battle, and O'Neill came out victorious so many times uh, that he had those people worried because uh, that didn't usually happen. And he had the geography of Ulster in his favor. The lands were just perfect for guerrilla fighting. And what he was known for was luring the troops into positions that he could then attack and be victorious at. And he sure do it, uh, sure did it. And it led up to, uh, it led up really to the Battle of Kinsale, which everybody had their hopes on. And that's where uh, the two Hughes, Hugh O'Neill and Red Hugh O'Donnell, uh, joined together. And Red Hugh O'Donnell was uh, uh, his son-in-law, actually. And the two families who had been at odds for so many years, the O'Donnells and the uh, O'Neills, two leading families, united at this point. And the younger Red Hugh O'Donnell, uh, he was always ready to go and ready to fight. And the older uh, Hugh O'Neill, he was a little cagier, and he knew uh, he knew how to lead a, a battle that they'd come out victorious in. Uh, Peter, have you heard of the uh, Battle of Kinsale at all? Well, absolutely. In fact, that... Oh, well, you can hear Peter's answer in our whole, our whole scheme of the 17th century there that ended up with Cromwell and then the Treaty of Limerick and 30,000 wild geese flee into the continent. You can hear that on our Hedgerow History Podcast of Ireland. Now it's time for our Book of the Week. Oh, well, we picked uh, The Fall of Irish Chiefs and Clan one more time here, and that's our lead volume in the Conquest of Ireland series. We have it available just in a set by itself, or as one volume, or as part of the uh, set, and I've got uh, more information on the uh, blog. If you click the link, you can go there, and uh, more information or you, even on that blog, plus on our webpage. And, uh, of course, it's got the names of Catholics and Protestants, and it includes Irish, Scots, uh, Irish and English settlers, and uh, there's a whole lot of genealogical type information there that's uh, one of a kind, and it gives specific names and locations, and uh, I tell you what, you don't want to miss it. It was originally uh, written by the Reverend Hill, and it has rare manuscripts and state papers, and you can see things uh, uh, that re- re- relate to the plantation of Ulster, the calendars of the Carew manuscripts, uh, collections of Irish state papers, and uh, for a time before 1588, English rule was actually actually mysteriously popular to some Irishmen, and Shane O'Neill was finally defeated in 1567 by the O'Donnells rather by than by the government. So there goes a question for you to ponder: Why weren't the Irish united? And uh, that's of course one of the reasons that led to their defeat. A lot of small kingdoms that kept fighting against each other until somebody came along and just started to unite one kingdom at a time, one small kingdom at a time, shall we say. And uh, hey, here's a quote. With only two or perhaps three exceptions, every native landlord and every native tenant within the bounds of the six counties in the north was dispossessed and displaced. And although a few of both classes were afterwards permitted to share slightly in the great land spoil, it was only in some other and less attractive localities than their own. And, you know, uh, that land takeover and, and loss of uh, culture really is, is one thing that ended up driving a lot of Irish to America. And of the main families you find in those records, we show uh, the Maguires who op- occupied Fermanagh, uh, the O'Hanlons who occupied O'Neillan and Orior, uh, the McCains or the McCannas of Clan Brazel, and the McMahons of Monaghan, the O'Reillys and the O'Cahans and others, they were the prominent families, and they had a long and dis- distinguished history there. And uh, how did those and several other families disappear from there by the 19th century? This tells you how the plan was made and how the scheme was put into effect, and it has all kinds of juror, juror lists and rent rolls and uh, all kinds of new information for researchers. Ooh, now it's the Magnificent Seven. Oh, hey, in a little bit, we're going to mention the restored Irish records collection and also how the Harris family drives in Ireland. But now it's time for that Magnificent Seven. Let's raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Number one, Daniel McMurray of Palma Valley, California. Your down genealogy and family history notes has shipped. 
Number two, Jeremy Stampa Orwin of Abergavenny, UK. Your Irish Book of Arms and Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, has shipped. Number three, Thomas Cullen of Chula Vista, California. Your Irish Book of Arms shipped. Number four, Glenn King of Edmonton, Canada. Your Families of County Galway has shipped. Number five, Andrew Gibbons of Hornsby, Australia. Your Mayo and Londonderry County books have shipped. Number six, Sheila Sullivan of Cookville, Tennessee. Welcome as a new member. The Sullivans who came from the south of Ireland, probably Cork, and I believe they were the first to be in the U.S. was Timothy Dennis Sullivan. She says, my great-grandpa, and they want to know more about the family in Ireland. And number seven, Patrick J. Harris of Carbondale, Illinois. Welcome as a new member. Looking for John Joseph Harris, Glenn Bay, who married Margaret Gee Longford. And Annie McNally of Carrick Macross, who married Michael P. Cody at St. Joseph's Church. They lived on church after they were married. Oh boy, and we've got an online search list on the webpage too if you want to do a little poking around and you're new at all this. And that reminds me, I need to give a big thank you to all of our members, everybody who's a patron and who has not just joined as a member who might have bought a book. Uh, you keep this whole operation alive and really... Uh, if I wasn't here, we'd be all alone, and, and that would be terrible. Uh, coming up next, we got some notes on the Irish family name of the day. Well, the name of the day is a very well-known name, that's for sure. Uh, the Irish family name of the day is Harris, and today it's honor in honor of Patrick Harris, mentioned above, and uh, or mentioned just a little bit ago, and re related spellings of the name are Fitzharris and Harrison, and sometimes Harris with a E at the end of the name, don't you know? And sometimes Harris can have two R's in the middle of it, and sometimes one, but if you've been doing this for a while, you know all about that. And we list a lot of those various spellings of many, many Irish family names, thousands of them, in the ver Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. I've got a link to that book on the blog. I wrote that several years ago. Uh, now, the history of the name. You know, families of the name of Harris, they're usually of foreign extraction in Ireland, and most were planters' families, planter families of English heritage. And we were talking a little bit earlier in the podcast uh, and the book uh, about uh, the setup and the actual coming of the families of English heritage in, into uh Ireland, and our book Milesian Families gives the name as one of Limerick and Tipperary that arose uh, just in 1642 in England in one case uh, from England, and the census of 1659 finds the name in Limerick, Dublin, Antrim, and Cork, and in more modern times the birth index finds his name in Dublin, Cork, and Antrim primarily, and Harahy is another related spelling of the name on occasion. You have to be careful about that. Uh, one pedigree of Harris of Devonshire, England, shows one of the family who died at Cahernoni in County Cork in 1636 and who was buried at Kilcreden, County Cork. So if it's County Cork, you might be related uh, to those Harrises of Devonshire, England. Why, you might be related to the Queen. Who knows? Uh... Now, if you take a quick look at the Irish family coats of arms, if you look in the old family arms before the coming of the Irish Free States, uh, there is no uh, Harris arms given in the Irish Book of Arms, but that's okay. Many, many families ha have no arms. Uh, hey, and coming up later this episode, the Byrne family is tied to one big genetic mutation, and we'll tell you about how to go about uh, finding more about that. You know, these genetic things... Uh, it's not just for today. You can go back and see, hey, look, this started in the 1700s, and maybe you've got the same genetic mutation. Now we're going to come up and look for the, uh, we're going to look into the free master online index at irishroots.com, and that's where you type in the uh, your family name, and if it has a Mac or an O before it, you just type the root word in. So if it was uh, O'Reilly, you just type in Riley. And all the books with your name in it come popping up, and that's a free service on irishroots.com. Uh, so be sure to try that with your name. And we did that with the name of Harris. We typed that in, and we found, uh, oh my gosh, we found over 100 listings for the names in our books. And uh, I'm going to give you all the examples of that in a minute, but boy, that means you shouldn't have any trouble finding Harris in Ireland, should you? I wonder if it was a shortened form of Harrison. Well, 
here we are, the free master index. Here are the seven uh, examples we've taken out of those 100. We find Harris in King James Irish Army List. That's a book we published a while back. I think I've only got one carton of those left. Number two, Hugh Harris is in Kelly Armagh Genealogy and Family History Notes. Uh, one T. Harris is in County Monaghan Genealogy and Family History Notes. And there's a William Harris with an E on the end of the name in County Tyrone Genealogy and Family History Notes. And there's a N. Harris in Irish Families on the Cal California Trail. We wouldn't want to cut out the USA. And number six, Harris's Hibernica uh, in Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters is given in the index of that book. And number seven, Harris is also given in the Fall of Irish Chiefs and Clans. And that was the book of the week this week. So uh, there's one more thing that you might find in that book, mention of Harris. And that would also might tie into some settlers that uh, came from England into the north of Ireland, because that's what that book covers mainly. It's the north of Ireland in the 17th century. But there's fo footnotes on the 16th century and some notations taking it all the way up to the uh, 1800s in isolated instances. Now it's time for... Around the world in Irish ways, here are the web pages and the videos of the month as I found them. Uh, number one, what one Harris family does in its spare time in Ireland. Uh, if you're a demolition derby driver, you might want to watch this, even if you're not a Harris. Uh, it's sort of a one-car demolition derby by this family, I think. But take a look. They had the nerve to put it up on YouTube and showed you how they drove right through fences and good gosh, who knows what else. Uh, link on the blog. Number two, the flight of the earls, and that ties right in with the fall of the Irish chiefs and uh, clans uh, that was uh, up there for the uh, book of the month. And that's a video, and uh, that's on uh, YouTube. Got a link on the blog. Number three, the Clare County Library genealogy section is our web page of the month. And I've got a link to that on the blog and more about that later. And number four, 1901 and 1922 census is online. Uh, what about that 1926 census? Is that coming up? Uh, well, we're going to find out. Uh, that's on a little blog there. Is that about an Irishman's diary, is it? Uh, taken from the irishtimes.com, it looks like. So we'll find out if that 1926 census just might be being released. Now, that's sort of late for research. You'd think, my gosh, if somebody wants 1926, uh, they've already got their family all, all lined up. But, you know, it can help if you're doing later day research. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm happy with all the millions of records they've been turning up from the uh, 19th and 18th uh, century. That's pretty interesting. Uh, hey, and remember, we've got some video shorts, too, of our own on the web page. Don't forget about those. Link to those on the blog, too. And hey, now it's coming up to the, uh, is that the last section? Curious news and notes from Ireland today. Well, tying into our County Clare notice above, the Council of Irish Genealogical Organizations has given an award of excellence to the County Clare uh, Library in Ireland, and I agree with that. You've got to check it out. It's really, uh, it's really a heck of a deal. And I've got the web page listed on the blog. Number two, Charles Byrne was a true Irish giant, and he was tied to a genetic mutation. He died in 1783. Got a link on the blog. Number three, Beaver Island, Michigan. Oh, Beaver Island, Michigan has an Irish heritage tied to Aaron Moore Island in County Donegal, Ireland. And Charlie O'Donnell was among the first that arrived there from Ireland, and they spoke Irish, and song was plentiful. <coughs> and I've run into some people that have collected a little bit of song from that island, I believe, and I can't remember the guy's name. It's terrible. Number four, Restored Irish Records Index, 1500 to 1920. The results of the government's call for public the public at large to donate records after the destruction of the records in Ireland, like parish registers, pedigrees, histories, probate, and court records. And if they had gone in there and studied in the library and made copies and taken it home, hey, they could bring it back. And that's what they did. And I've got a link to that on the blog. 
for that records index. And number five, John Fitzgerald was part of an early Irish settlement in New Zealand, which was 15% Irish, they say. Link on the blog. Uh, number six, the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland archive has been launched. Uh, that's a searchable database. And a shout out to Chris M. Patton on Twitter. I First time I saw that. And number seven, the Irish Cultural Center of Phoenix, Arizona is very active. They're opening up an Irish library, and uh, you might want to check out the webpage. It includes Celtic studies and a full-fledged academy, so that would be very interesting. Even if you're not from Arizona, you might learn something. Looks like a pretty interesting thing. They had Irish language uh, classes, I think, and they have a lot of music, uh, music instruction and dance instruction, so... Hey, check that out. That would be well worth your time. And let me see. I think, oh, yeah, that note on the Irish New Zealand, I got that from NZ Genealogy on Twitter, a little tweet there. So I wanted to be sure to give credit for that. Uh, there's so much information flying around the web anymore. You really just don't know what to expect or where to look. But we've been having a great time here. We've been going to some Irish sessions, uh, Irish music sessions, and we've even been getting a song in of our own every now and then. Uh, here locally so remember that if you've got things like that going on in your area uh, you might as well get your head out of the books every now and then and go down and enjoy some free music and song just ask around about any uh, uh, free Irish music sessions going on usually it's at a little pub or a little small uh, small dining establishment and the musicians just line up in the corner and play their hearts out and it's all free that's the best deal in the states for sure and I know it's been going on in Ireland a lot more than that. That's it for now. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com, Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe, uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>